This 10th year of Daily Tech News Show is made possible by its listeners. Thanks to all of you, including Miss Music Teacher, James C. Smith, Miranda Janelle, and our lifetime supporter, Dan Gardner. Thanks, Dan. On this episode of DTNS, X gets Apple App Store support. Parents are wondering where their screen time settings went. And do you really know who you're emailing? Government defense departments around the world say no, not really. This is the Daily Tech News for Monday, July 31st, last day of July, 2023. From Studio Secret Bunker, I'm Sarah Lane. From Petaluma, I am Megan Maroney. And from a muggy, overcast Southern California, I'm the show's producer, Roger Chang. Well, Roger, we hope you are keeping cool. Uh, Megan, you and I are pretty close to each other geographically. Um, It's kind of hot out there. Could be worse. We know a lot of you uh, in parts of the world are really sweltering right now, so I hope everybody's staying cool and safe. Um, but we're here to talk tech news. So let's get started with the quick hits. Amazon is set to enforce a new policy that requires some domestic and foreign streaming services to allocate 30% of their in-country advertising impressions to Amazon. Starting September 30th, devs who offer ad-supported Fire TV apps in the U.S. that see 50,000 hours or more usage per month must enroll in Amazon Publishing Services, APS. If outside the U.S., the threshold is lowered to 30,000 hours. In countries that can't use APS, Amazon will require ad-supported streaming video services to provide 30% of their ad revenue to the company. Oh, that sounds familiar to me. I wonder why that sounds familiar to me. Hmm, I don't know. I'll think about it later. Microsoft is testing a Windows 11 update designed to improve power usage and minimize fan use on GPUs by auto-adjusting refresh rates on multiple monitors based on the content that's being displayed. It should improve refresh rate dependent multitasking. Let's say you're playing a game and you're also watching a video at the same time. That would be improved. The latest Canary Channel builds of Windows 11 also have dynamic refresh rate or DRR bumps for laptops and a new battery saver option. I have all the Amazon stories today, probably because I ordered so many things on Prime Day. Amazon achieved its fastest Prime speeds ever in the U.S. in the last quarter. The company said it delivered more than 1.8 billion units to Prime Prime members so far this year. And in the the 60 largest U.S. metro areas, achieved more than half of the orders arriving either same or next day. As for the millions of items that are currently unavailable to be delivered that same day, Amazon says it plans to double the amount of delivery sites in the coming years to speed things up even faster. Well, you have Amazon stories and I have Apple stories today. It's just how the cookie (laughs) crumbled. The Financial Times sources say Luxshare Precision Industry, the sole assembler of Apple's upcoming Vision Pro headset, is going to get more work from Apple because Apple likes Luxshare. Luxshare has already expanded from more basic connectors for Apple products like making components for AirPods and Apple Watch and the iPhone itself. Now, you might say, isn't Foxconn like the iPhone maker? It still is. It's, it's the making the bulk of iPhones. But Luxshare is joining in production of Apple's Phone 15 series in August, reportedly assembling premium models for the first time. Some very observant Reddit users noticed that Samsung's flagship Galaxy S23 Ultra phone has lost the option that enabled higher bit rates when shooting 8K videos at 30 FPS. The previous 100 megabits per second is now only at, is now only at 80 megabits per second following a July security update. Android police thinks that this might be designed to cut down on stuttering and jerkiness in the final video, though no official word yet from Samsung for the changes. Those were the quick hits. I mentioned Apple News, and I'm not stopping here, Megan. Uh, We're kind of in a summer slump of tech news. It happens every year around this time, where people start looking ahead for momentum. And with Apple's next event on the horizon, the iPhone 15 is right up there as far as what people want to talk about. Now, Bloomberg's Mark Gurman, who knows Apple maybe more than anybody outside of the company, reports in his Power On newsletter that Apple is set to unveil standard iPhone 15 models that ditch the old notch for the dynamic island design that it introduced last year to its pro line, but not its entire line. A USB-C connector is expected to replace the lightning connector. Going to make a lot of people happy. A lot of people are just like USB-C all the way. Um, And a new little detail is that the pro and pro max models 
may be using low injection pressure over molding, uh, commonly known as LIPO, L-I-P-O, that will shrink the bezel around the display to 1.5 millimeters, teeny tiny, down from already pretty teeny 2.2 millimeters, but quite a bit smaller. Apple's Watch Series 7 introduced LiPo. Uh, you might recall that the watch faces used to have quite a bit larger bezel than they do now. And the company reportedly plans to also bring it to the iPad eventually. But that's not really what's making the big Apple news today. So Megan, tell us more. All righty, this is a good one. Uh, very unhappy users continue to report screen time issues where the settings either don't stick or they auto revert to the previous setting without any warning. Apple says that it's aware of the issue, which is particularly plaguing parents who use screen time's downtime settings feature to remotely schedule off limits times for their kids using the cloud based family sharing system. Screen time also restricts some apps and content for kids that parents or guardians are supposed to be able to control remotely. Now, Apple previously said the issue was fixed in the with iOS uh, 16.5 back in May, but the Wall Street Journal says it is testing. In its testing, the problem, in fact, persists, uh, even using the iOS 17 public beta. Yeah, it's interesting. Apple said, well, we fixed it back in May and people go, well, it's not fixed. And <laughs> I mean, as of this recording, Apple's like, we're aware, uh, but uh, no one really seems to know why this keeps happening. And it seems to happen uh, not to, to everyone that's using screen time, uh, but uh, the Wall Street Journal did speak to a handful of parents who had um, different results, uh, but for the most part, all said that they were experiencing errors. You know, either they would set screen time limits that would just go away the next time they looked at their settings or would revert back to maybe a previous setting that shouldn't be there anymore. Um, Wall Street Journal uh, also notes that uh, parents, um, in this case, they spoke to parents um, who said, Okay, well, here's some here's some options. Uh, we can use third party apps to manage screen time. You can do that outside of uh, you know Apple's uh, own OS, but they often cost money. Um, there's also privacy concerns uh, using a third party developer who might do something with your data. Um, you know, and it also the, the the freer it is, the more sus it is uh, with stuff like this. Also. You can set screen limits directly on your child's device um, if for some reason, you know, that whole cloud thing isn't working, but that's cumbersome. Um, and maybe you have a few kids in the house um, or a few kids who you are, you know, managing their time. Um, another option that was brought up by a parent that the Wall Street Journal uh, spoke to said, you know, my kids already use Chromebooks at school. Um, they're really familiar with, you know, kind of everything Google um, and, you know, to that effect, Android. And, you know, if this is something that I'm paying, uh, well, you're paying a premium for the iPhone itself, but something that's supposed to be part of the it just works uh, version of iOS and it's not working, you know, why don't I maybe consider switching over to Android? So there are options out there. This is probably going to get patched. Um, but it's uh, a uh, inconvenience at best and, you know, per perhaps a lot worse, you know, if a kid ends up getting access to some sort of website that would have been blocked, you know, for children otherwise kind of thing. Megan, I know your kids are uh, old enough to probably <laughs> manage their own screen time at this point, but what were the sort of things that you dealt with when they were younger? Uh, well, so this didn't exist back in my day, right. uh, and it was uh, just kind of a free for all. Like I did, I did know people who tried those third party apps, and you know, with mixed results. Um, and sometimes they really just took advantage of parents' fear and charged a whole bunch of money for something that, like, sometimes right, worked right. and sometimes didn't. Um, and yeah, I mean. I don't know. I mean, my kids, I set my own screen time limits now and my kids do too, just for themselves. You know, like we're, we all are similar and it's like, oh yeah, well, if I spend more than 30 minutes on TikTok a day, then I probably um, am, you know, doing something wrong with my life. So like, it's nice to have those. And that's the thing about this. They all work if you're setting them yourself. But like, these are people that like, why don't they have access to their kid's phone? Why are they doing it remotely? I don't understand. Um, as a parent of 20 and 18 year olds, I am, uh, I am allowed to judge 
judge other parents, which I will do now. Um, and uh, I mean, listen, I, you got them to adulthood. You you deserve right. it. They are. They were all alive as before I started this podcast. They were making toast in the toaster oven. So um, by themselves, uh, some of the people in the Wall Street Journal article were setting um, screen time limits for. 16 and 15 year olds and I feel like at that age they got to be handling this themselves like it's I I feel like that's a little odd to be like remotely setting you know uh screen time settings on your 16 year old's iPhone I mean I just yeah. want to admit I am judging um because at some point they're gonna just have to figure it out themselves but um yeah, I don't know. I mean, and then in terms of like, yes, it's terrible if some if you tried to block a website and your kids get to it. But like, that's the other thing I learned about parenting. Like, just assume your kid is going to get access to all those things. Assume they're going to see porn by the age of 12 and talk to them about it. You know, just like you have to you have to just assume the worst and talk, talk talk to them about it. Um, my kids, right. if you ever talk to them, will tell you that like I, I talk to them too much about these things. But yeah, so I don't know. I have one more thing to say on this. The article uh, said, this is my favorite line in the article. It says, this can go unnoticed for days or weeks and kids don't always report back when they get extra time for games and social media. Yeah, no kidding. Um, it's like, yeah, they never report back. Yeah. So, yeah. That, I was trying thoughts. to, you know, when you were saying in my day, we didn't have things like this. Um, I don't have children, uh, but I was one once. And I will say anything that I could get away with, I would. Um, so I don't think the ki the youth of today is all that different. And the only thing that I could really compare this to, because there weren't things like iPhones and screen time, was, you know, being grounded. You know, I would get in trouble for something and I wouldn't be able to go to so-and-so's slumber party type thing. Um, which sucked and, you know, it was punishment. Um, but it does sound like, you know, in many cases, the screen time thing is like, it's for your own good. It's not like I'm taking your privs away. It's just, you're not supposed to be on, you know, I don't know, TikTok, for example, more than, you know, this amount of time. And so let's limit it for, you know, everybody's peace of mind. And if that's not working, I can see where their frustration is coming from. All right, let's talk about top-level domains, Megan. Uh, the .mil and .ml domain mixeroo continues. Uh, you might recall we told you a few weeks ago how members of the U.S. military were accidentally se sending potentially, not always, but potentially sensitive documents to email addresses associated with the African country of Mali, which is .ml, rather than .mil for the U.S. military. Yeah, you know, if you're typing fast, it could happen. British authorities have launched their own investigation now after officials from the U.K. Ministry of Defense mistakenly also sent emails meant for U.S. military intelligence to the government in Mali. The Ministry of Defense said Friday they were investigating the incident and also said, quote, we have opened an investigation after a small number of emails were mistakenly forwarded to an incorrect email domain, end quote. Yeah, that's pretty much what you did. So, Megan, like I said, happens to the best of us, but one might wonder how something like, you know, just regular old email addresses being used for sensitive documents from defense departments... Um, to the country of Mali, which, uh, depending on, you know, where you fall on the political scope, uh, might not be the best place for sensitive documents from the U.S. or the U.K. to end up. Do you have a suggestion for an alternative? Uh, don't use email, maybe? I mean, that's what <laughs> seems weird to me. Like, if it's really sensitive documents, I mean, you can't, if you send something to the wrong place, it's going to get to the wrong place, whether it's encrypted or not, right? Um, I, su I suppose, yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I, I guess the alternatives to email are vast. I always sort of expect that, you know, it, you know, I'm not so sure about the what's going on in the UK, but I, I, I always assume that, you know, the Department of Defense in the US has all sorts of apps that the rest of us haven't heard of. And probably because I've watched too many spy movies. But yeah, the whole kind of like, oh, whoops, I did it again. I sent something to Molly instead of, you know, my colleague uh, is, is it surprises me sort of. Roger, were you going to say something? I was going to say that it's uh, one of those things where, A, why are they using email? And I understand that there is still a place for it. Um, 
B, I'm wondering if this is so frequent enough if the the US military has considered changing domain names to like just dot mm. gov. So you send it to a dot gov and there I mean, unless there's a country that has a dot gov uh a domain name, which I don't believe there is. I don't um, think so. Yeah. Uh it would go a long way to kind of mitigating that. Also, it just shows you how how much time has passed since um uh, inf- information technology or, or, or communications have have not been altered. I mean, if you think about it, email has been around since the the, the late seventies, right? So you're going f- uh, forty years, right? Even the phone system changed up at that point. You got a couple of new zip codes, and now you had to punch a one every time you wanted to dial internationally, you know, for a country code uh, for the U.S. So. I, I'm wondering if maybe they just everyone everyone needs just a, a an updated uh, uh, understanding and agreement of of what counts as uh, communication between uh, secure or which ident if not securely sensitive lanes of communication. I mean, to be fair, the article says that it was like information that had like dates of when employees would be, and you know, it's like they say they weren't state secrets. So I so don't know. Right? It's it's one of those things where, especially in intelligence, sometimes it's not directly finding out the information. It's direct. It's kind of figuring out where you should start looking for information. So if you right. have a lot of dignitaries yeah. showing up at a house party, oh, maybe you should send someone over there outside just to kind of park and listen. Well, the, or, the funny just, thing- or just sort of knowing, you know, if someone sends, sends information that's not classified to someone else, well, now you know who those people are who are communicating with one another, you know, and there's some context there. And, 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 and to stress the point, the, the, the MOD, the Ministry of Defense in the UK, did say that there were no, of, it was less than 20 times that this has happened according to their knowledge right now. Uh, and maybe some hype, you know, sensitive information regarding uh, missile uh, technology. But for the most part, it's just, you know, I mean, it's a small, small a bit. It's probably very, probably in the single digit percentage mistakes. But, you know, it's just the, what they used to say in World War II, loose lips sink ships. So it just takes one, takes one. I actually didn't know that that was a World War II thing. I just hear it all the time. Loose lips sink ships. I know ships. what it means, but I never knew the origin. How about that? And I th- it came with like a, a poster of like a woman. It was a little bit sexist, if I recall, too. Like it was like, you know, don't talk to. Oh, right. Women. Yeah. Women. Yeah. Don't tell her but, your secret. Mm hmm. You know, yes. you're going to lose. She's your not woman. your wife. Don't talk to her. It was basically uh, it. Yeah, oh, exactly. Yeah. Well, if, if you have thoughts on anything that we have talked about on the show thus far or might talk about on a future show, uh, one way that you can let your voice heard of what we should talk about is our subreddit. Submit stories and vote on stories at dailytechnewsshow.reddit.com. It's where we get a lot of information. So thank you in advance. I was going to sing this like salt and pepper, but I lost my nerve. Uh, so I'm just oh. going to say, let's talk about X, baby. Get it? You get it. I do get it. I love Thank it. you. Thank you, Megan. Uh, I made another terrible X joke last week, so I'm just going to keep the streak going. Uh, there's another nail in the coffin of the old Bluebird app today. Apple has officially allowed the company formerly known as Twitter to change its name to X in the App Store. And you might say, is that so weird? Uh, Apple's actually one of the last to allow Twitter to change its name in Apple's system UI because Apple typically doesn't allow apps to use just a single character because companies aren't really ever named that. So it could be confusing or just, you know, doesn't make a lot of sense based on your company name. The tagline in the iOS app store also been changed from it's what's happening. That was Twitter's previous app store slogan to blaze your glory, which is apparently something that Elon Musk posted on X last night. I mean, he did. Uh, I, I have seen the <laughs> tweets myself and they still are called tweets until I'm told otherwise. All right. I'm holding on to the bird. So, uh, yeah, uh, I don't know, Megan. Uh, <laughs> Well, there's a lot, a lot of a lot to unpack here. And I have two important questions that we need to have answered by the end of the show or else. Um, One is, uh, what does he mean by blaze your glory? 
And also, um, you and I, which uh, apps are we going to invent that have one letter? Since now it's like we can't, you know. It's like, just, it's like, well, we yeah. have, I don't know. I mean, if we're using, you know, the English alphabet, we got 25 more options. Right, um, exactly. I, yeah, I'm going to get on that. Um, mm -hmm. You know, S comes to mind because, you know, I'm not very inventive. Uh, mm -hmm. But I don't know what the app would be. Uh, 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 more importantly, though. Blaze Your Glory. Now, Blaze of Glory, um, great song, um, mm -hmm. but uh, uh, I don't know what that means. I feel like it's like some sort of ha-ha euphemism that maybe I don't understand, and I'm not, you know, as we unpack this, I'm not sure how much I want to unpack that specifically, mm -hmm. but uh, mm -hmm. no, I, I don't know what it means. I don't know that it's supposed to mean anything. I think it's supposed to be silly because I can't imagine that that's a real tagline that would mean anything to anybody or, uh, you know, at the very least inspire them to use the app. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. I, I let's, let's just agree to blaze our glory in this show. Sure. I mean, here we are. I mean, I, I feel yeah. like I'm blazing my glory a lot right now. So, <laughs> right. okay. We're, exactly. we're, you know, we're on the right path. Okay. Should we move on to more serious um, Twitter things? Sure. X things. Uh, X, formerly known as Twitter, announced on Monday that uh, owner Elon Musk will continue to lead the product and engineering teams. But now uh, new CEO Linda Yaccarino will lead all the other teams, all the boring stuff like legal and sales. Sorry to call sales boring. Only legal is boring. Musk and Yaccarino uh, will jointly oversee the trust and safety team. Not boring. They're doing that together which they're obviously responsible for content moderation, which is a big deal. Um, it's been kind of a little unclear what is happening management-wise over there. Uh, does does this make any sense to you, Sarah? Well, nothing about X makes sense to me right now. Um, the whole thing is very chaotic. And I know that part of that is sort of we're all having fun in the chaos. Well, some people don't think it's funny, fun or funny at all. I don't really think it's funny, um, but I have no uh, option but to just sort of be like, this is chaotic, what's next um, kind of thing. You know, I know that it being part of the news cycle, um, you know, with stuff like Blazer Glory is, you know, largely theater, um, you know, even if there's more to it. But as far as splitting up duties... Um, and Roger had uh, uh, brought up the Netflix co-CEOs, um, uh, as as another example of because because I had said, I mean, when would a CEO say I don't want to be CEO anymore? This is Elon Musk hiring somebody to be CEO and saying, you know, this is the person for the job, and then saying, I'm actually going to you know handle product and engineering, which if you look at Twitter's history is very very large part of the company, um, and and the new CEO is going to handle legal and sales. Um, that might be a great a co-position for the two to be in. They might have had all sorts of closed door meetings about how this makes the most sense for everybody. Um, it might be weird. It might not be all that weird. Um, but I think because the saga of X changes uh, by the hour, um, it's just another way for people to say, well, hold on a second. So he's not really relinquishing control. I mean, if anything, you know, the product side of Twitter X, whatever, you know what I mean, um, is, you know, that's that's the only thing it really had. Like all the other departments don't exist without the product. So that's arguably, you know, taking control of um, of everything that you said that you were going to hand off to somebody else. However, I also think there are probably a lot of situations in companies where uh, a founder, a CEO, or maybe both um, says, okay, I'm going to, you know, I'll keep my board seat, but, you know, I've got it in the hands of, you know, this next person who's the right person to do the job. You know, we thought that about Jeff Bezos and um, Andy Jassy, for example. Um, you know, I, we don't always know who's really pulling the strings, uh, as it were, anyway. So, yeah, I don't know. I mean, maybe two people are necessary at this point because it's such a clown show. 
Well, I mean, we don't usually know who's pulling the strings. That's what I find so suspect about this because it's like usually, you know, you have a CEO, maybe they're just a figurehead or maybe they are really running things and you have a pro- head of product or a head of product and engineering and then you have a head of sales and, you know, it's all like we don't really know who's running things. But like the fact that like their um, team came out and said, oh, you know, don't worry like Elon said, don't worry, I'm taking care of the product and engineering and the lady is taking care of the rest. So like, I think to mm-hmm. me, like maybe I'm jumping to conclusions, but it feels a little mansplaining to me. It's like trying mm-hmm. to reassure people um, when that's not really reassuring to a lot of people at all. So I don't know. That's my take. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you might have a take as well, uh, by the way, if you're listening and saying, oh, oh, you guys forgot this one important detail or I wish I could chime in right now. Uh, you can't uh, send us an email feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. Uh, before we leave X News, uh, real quick, uh, Kanye West, uh, yay, um, as he's known now, has been unbanned by X again. You might recall that uh, Kanye was banned back in December for tweeting an image of a swastika. And that was just two months after his account was reinstated after being banned for two years prior for other things, before Elon Musk even owned the company. The company now says that ads won't appear next to Ye's post and he won't be able to monetize his account either. James Mann wrote in to give us a heads up about a robot stealing his job. I'm sorry, James. According to a new uh, a local news site in Gahana, that's a city in Ohio near Columbus, I think, or maybe mm-hmm. it's a neighborhood in Columbus. Not sure. Uh, it now has what it calls the first ever cake decorating robot. Uh, and James, who sometimes works as a cake decorator, decorator, he's not mad about it. He's excited. Uh, B-Hex is a 3D printing company that has been contracted by NASA and the U.S. Army to install a free on-demand cake writing machine at a Kroger's grocery store. Uh, but make your way to Ohio quick if you want a cake decorated by this robot. It's only going to be there for another month. Oh, James. Um, I, I love how James is like, listen, uh, I sometimes do decorate cakes and if the robot is that good at it uh watch out cake decorators <laughs> i mean it's a little tongue-in-cheek but also not right this is a you know a s- very specialized job not a lot of people are good at this specific job so if you got a robot who's like the best cake maker ever oof, you know tough times mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. really it's so true yeah um is it time to check out the mailbag Let's do it. <laughs> uh, Frank wrote in about our Apple versus Google Maps convo. I think the last time I was on the show last Monday, we also had someone else. This is such a popular topic, and we're not going to solve this Apple versus Google problem today. But Frank says, I think both Apple and Google Maps work now. I prefer Apple Maps Street View because it shows the compass direction you're viewing. Google does not and has always made it difficult to move the direction I went. Uh, I'm now retired, but was a truck driver. The information over the last decade has been wonderful, especially when it comes to online security. A lot of what you talk about is above my level, but that a lot of has been valuable. Oh, Frank, thank you for the email. And thanks for letting us know that Apple Maps is working for you. Um, You know, driving a truck, I would think that uh, the right Maps app is of utmost importance um, rather than the casual user. So yeah, good, good stuff. Uh, And a reminder, uh, if you do have feedback, we want to hear it. Feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. Hey, patrons, you're going to want to stick around for the extended show, Good Day Internet, because it's just a fun show, but also because we're going to be talking about a new e-bike, sort of. This is Super 73's new electric balance bike, which claims that riders don't need licenses, don't need registration, or and don't need insurance to ride them, and they go pretty fast. What could possibly go wrong? Uh, but just a reminder, you can catch the show live Monday through Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern, 2000 UTC, and you can find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. We will be back doing it all again tomorrow with a foldable phone head-to-head between Samsung and Motorola with Ayaz Akhtar joining us. Don't mess it. Talk to you then. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. (laughs) 